I love building my own speakers, and that's probably why you're here. You're probably into it as well. But there's one part of speaker building that I absolutely despise. I find this part frustrating, and it's kind of expensive, and I don't really enjoy designing and wiring these up. Crossovers. I've got several projects right now that are just sitting around either unstarted or unfinished because I just don't like doing crossovers. And if you make a mistake, you might ruin the entire project and have to start over again, which means logging on to Parts Express and ordering some more components and then waiting two or three days for them to get in. Oh, and these crossover parts can get really expensive. One of the inductors for the Dynas was 30 bucks, and I dropped it when I was trying to lay out the crossover board and broke the iron core. The solution to the crossover problem is this little box right here. This is the Dayton Audio KAB 4100. It's a four channel amplifier with digital signal processing. So there's no need to learn how to use crossover design software. There's no need to buy a pile of inductors, capacitors, and resistors and figure out how to lay them out on a board. No need to solder everything together. You just plug this into your computer and then with some relatively simple software, you're up and running in a matter of minutes. But it's more than just a four channel amplifier. It's got some interesting tricks up its sleeve and I'll show you those in a little bit. For now, let's walk through the process for hooking this thing up to the computer and programming the DSP. Grab three things, a power supply, the amplifier itself, and a controller interface. After programming, the interface can be disconnected and used to program another board, so you'll only ever need to buy one of them. Now they've got two different interfaces available. As far as I can tell, the main difference is that one uses a USB-C interface and the other one uses a mini USB. You don't need both, just one of them is fine. Oh, you'll need a fourth thing. You will need a speaker. I just happen to have a pair of Dynas laying around, so that's what I'm gonna use. Connect the amp to the speaker and the power supply. Go ahead and establish a Bluetooth connection. And oh, hey, let me take a second and say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon with a special shout out to Dylan, Bo, and Baba. If you'd like to help me make videos like this, go ahead and click on that link down below and support me on Patreon. Next, you want to grab the programmer and look for these switches. For the ICP1 board, which is the USB mini board, you want to set it to program. For the KPX board, there are two switches. For USB mode, you want to set that to USB-I, and USB-I mode needs to be set to 2C. Now we open Sigma Studio, and we load an example project. I'm going to use a simple stereo project. This project is designed for creating an active crossover and DSP for a pair of two-way speakers. Now we connect the programmer board to the computer using our USB-C cable. Then we go over to hardware configuration and we should get this green indicator right here. Now the last step, and we save this one to last, we connect the programmer board to the amplifier board using this cable right here. Port five is right here on this side. It is the programming port. Now you can go into the software and tinker around to your heart's content and literally create anything that you might want. If you have some test equipment like a microphone and Room EQ Wizard, you can run sweeps in order to fine tune everything. You've basically got no limits here. Now when you are done, save the controller. You can use it to program another board. At some point in the future, I'm going to do just that, but for now I want to show you this hidden little feature of this amplifier. This right here is the speaker connector. It comes with two of these. Each connector has four wires. And on the plug, you're gonna notice this little bullet connector right here. When it's connected, it is in stereo mode, meaning this plug right here has two channels of output. When you unplug it, it's in mono mode, meaning this connector right here has one channel of output. That's a little counterintuitive, but that's what the instruction manual says, and it's also printed on the back of the board. That allows you to take this four-channel amplifier and bridge it into a two-channel amplifier. Or you can bridge just one of the channels, and now you've got a 2.1 amplifier. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. You could, of course, just do four full-range channels, 
and then the parametric equalizer in the DSP can be used to equalize those four channels. You can also bridge one channel to give you extra power for a woofer in a three-way design and have the other two channels run the mid-range and the tweeter similar to the setup in the Dynas. I know what you're thinking. I'd like to have two channel stereo. And if I put my amp all on one speaker, I won't have two channel stereo. Well, this amp has a feature known as cascading, where a second one of these amplifiers is controlled by the first one. This lets you mount two of these amplifiers in a case and output six channels to a pair of something like this, where you've got a solid subwoofer down here to produce your bass, plus a mid-range and a tweeter. I know what you're thinking, hey, that's kind of expensive, uh, two of these amplifiers. Well, by the time you buy an amplifier and all the crossover components, it's not going to be that much more expensive than just wiring up one of these with the passive crossover. And it's going to be a whole lot easier. If you don't know how to use a soldering iron, that's the way to go. Thank you so much to the team over at Parts Express for sending this out for me to review. I am working on a speaker build with this board. To see that speaker build, click on this playlist right here. And I will see you on the next adventure.